Okie dokie. Firstly, I'm just using the term Big Free as a blanket statement. You can call them whatever you want. I know saying anything is the current Big Free can spark a lot of debate, especially when I've chosen a manga that isn't even from Shonen Jump, but this video isn't about what the Big Free is as a concept, so let's just move past that. I actually wasn't going to take this video very seriously. I was lying in bed, ready to crash, when I suddenly realized that the three most popular shonen anime out right now, Jujutsu Kaisen, Attack on Titan, and Demon Slayer, are all series that I have in some way dropped in the past. I know, look at this guy. Think he's so cool because he doesn't watch mainstream shit. I thought it would be funny to just make a short video trying to remember why I dropped them and maybe shit on them a little. But I realized what was actually shit was my memory, which just resulted in a shit video. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to read at least 50 chapters of each manga. I'll see if there's a good stopping point uh, within that and share my thoughts about how I feel about them now. See if I remember why I dropped them and if I still share those same feelings. I'm gonna spoil what I have read, but I'll let you guys know where I'm at for anyone that hasn't reached as far. If you understand, let's continue. Let's start with Jujutsu Kaisen. I think we can skip synopses for all three of these because everyone should know them. I remember that I dropped this because it just didn't seem like something that would stand out as a battle shonen, but I also dropped it really early so I never allowed myself to get a proper feel for it. Well, we'll see how I feel now, so let's get into it. So I've stopped at chapter 3. I think I definitely dropped this manga a bit too early when I first read it. At the time, I was binging a bunch of manga at the same time and I ended up cutting a lot of stuff off the reading list because my life was getting busy again. There were definitely a few manga that I never gave a proper chance to and Jujutsu Kaisen seems to be one of those. I really like the way it treats death, even with the humans dying horribly like being incinerated instantly or transmogrified into horrible blobs. This manga has a level of respect when it comes to human lives. I especially like how they handled Junpei Yoshino. He appears for a short time, they let us get close to him and his mother, and then they both die. Relatively quickly. It does a great job of showcasing how gruesome curses really are while also not wasting our time by making it overly sappy. It happens, and we now have to live with it and keep going. It adds so much more impact when it's not overly dramatic and done realistically. The action itself, I love a battle system with versatility, and cursed energy for Jujutsu Kaisen is basically just Nen or Stan powers, these characters can go as weird as they want. We've got the traditional supernatural stuff like summoning creatures and hurting people through straw dolls, simple abilities like controlling elements or being able to swap places with someone, and we get this fucking guy. This panel was an absolute riot. These are the type of fights I enjoy the most in Shonen Jump. Simple abilities that slowly get built on bit by bit to create a robust portfolio of whoop house. It's an easy visualization of growth and shows a lot of creativity when a character is either constantly finding new ways to use their powers or adding nuance like creating a fake trigger for their ability activation. The manga has some really cute comedy as well. Anytime a joke is made, it feels like everyone just reverts to this childlike wonder and it's hilarious. Gojo is the center of the silliness and that's probably one of the reasons why he's become a favorite for most people. This along with him being a badass. It does stretch out to the rest of the cast as well. It strikes a great balance between mature themes and juvenile hilarity. It does have that standard shonen jump feel, but it honestly doesn't matter to me that much if it is done right. One of my top shonen jump manga is Black Clover. I'm not going to dislike Jujutsu Kaisen for following the giants that paved the path. I mean, nothing is original, everything traces back to something else, it's how you build on your predecessors that sets you apart. And to be honest, I'm glad they're improving on what is already available, because some of those predecessors really do stumble at the start and it makes it a bit hard to stick around when it gets good. I am still waiting for this manga to pop out at me with an amazing arc or scene. I think I've read almost the equivalent of season 1 and I hear the upcoming Shibuya arc is pretty good. 
We'll see what happens because I'm definitely interested to read more. Next up is Attack on Titan. I dropped it after watching season 2. I've never actually touched the manga. I would say my main reason was just the long wait between season 1 and 2. That made me lose interest in the series, but we'll get into more details after I do a bit of reading. So that's chapter 50. These chapters are double the length of Shonen Jump, so this felt closer to maybe 70 or 80 chapters I just read. I'm honestly a bit tuckered out, but let's get into it. First off, man, these titans look goofy near the beginning. Honestly, the character designs are all goofy at the start. Nothing to really complain about, you haven't really gotten into manga until you've watched a mangaka's art improve over the years of a serialization. I would definitely say the designs improve pretty quickly, and the roughness gives a unique atmosphere to this manga. This may just be me, but was anyone else slightly disappointed when Titan Shifting was introduced? I was really into the idea of the omnidirectional mobility gear. It was a way of fighting that I had never seen before, and I honestly got a little sad when I realized this was a mecha anime in disguise. To be honest, ODM action still plays a part. You could argue that it wasn't a viable fighting style, but using it sparingly keeps it feeling special. But the Titan punching does get a bit boring for me. I think the main reason why I stopped watching this was that I wasn't really interested in the Titan lore. These chapters are usually 30 to 50 pages, and Whenever we're in a cooling off period, there's a lot of war text around the politics of their world and the mysteries of the titans. I just don't really have reason to care about what titans are. I can't just see them as giant zombies, so I don't feel the desire to learn more about them. Titan shifting kind of looks shit interesting, but once we found out about Annie, she throws herself out of the plot. and. Ymir, Rana, and Bertold haven't gotten enough screen time post-reveal from where I've stopped. It's a very gradual build-up, it definitely works for others, and I've definitely enjoyed slower paced shows before, but Attack on Titan just isn't doing it for me. I don't know about the later parts, I hear bits and pieces, but I really just have no interest in it at all. There is one thing I do have to say though. This manga plays its seriousness so well that it does a great job of coming back around and becoming funny again. The reaction faces, they're not over exaggerated per se, but the way they portray emotion is just so earnest that I can't help but laugh. I definitely understand why this is blown up, I just happen to be the unlucky few to fall off the bandwagon. I have no disdain for Attack on Titan, but this manga was a bit tiring to read. I probably won't continue it. Finally, Demon Slayer. I've actually finished the entire manga for this. What I dropped was the anime at the third episode. I picked up the manga because my friends wanted to go see the Mugen Train movie and I ended up reading it all because they recommended it to me. I know why I dislike this manga, I'm just rereading parts to refresh myself. I won't spoil anything past what has been adapted, the Entertainment District arc is airing at the time of recording, but let's get into the only manga here I actually dislike. First off, right at the start, I don't like how they killed off the family in the first chapter. I barely got any time to actually get to know them before they were invited to Muzan's dinner. It's a pet peeve of mine when a story tries to make me care about something when I've been given no reason to care. If we look back at the first two shows, Jujutsu Kaisen doesn't have us as the main focus, but Yuji's grandfather telling him to help people so he doesn't die alone right before he abruptly dies is a good example of a simple reason to make me care. Attack on Titan as well. Eren's mum selflessly sacrificing herself to save her children, before crying out for help again when her fear takes over, another good scene that made me care about this death. Demon Slayer just doesn't do that for this family. It really doesn't take that much to make me care about a character, but Demon Slayer just manages to write a boring massacre in chapter 1. One thing I'd put above all else is comedy. 
If you can write jokes that seamlessly fit in with your narrative, you're already well ahead as a writer in my books. It's something I wish I could do in my scripts, but that will take me a while longer. Anyway, I really enjoyed the comedy for the first few manga, I already went into that, but Demon Slayer again just doesn't do it for me. A lot of the jokes here feel unnaturally interjected into scenes. It feels like I'm reading a sketch that's separate from the story, while Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan were able to make the sketch feel like part of the story. I actually think a few Shonen Jump manga suffer from this. One Piece, Naruto, and My Hero Academia have some really awful comedic timing in their earlier days. I understand that comedy is not easy, I'm experiencing that myself when I make these videos, but it definitely doesn't help when I'm already just not into this series. I'm also not that big of a fan of the main four. They don't do anything egregious, but I find them to range between boringly tolerable to just downright annoying. Nezuko is the least offensive, she does spend most of her time in a box. She is kind of boring as a silent heroine, but they do show her character through her actions, which I think is nice. Inosuke and Tanjiro I put in the same boat, an overly compassionate hero and a battle crazy rival. There's just nothing really here that compels me when I've seen these characters done already in other entries. Zenitsu, he's just a whiny incel. You all know why Zenitsu is un unlikable. All four of them, they definitely improve greatly as the story progresses, but it's hard to read something when none of the main characters grab onto you. For the action, I really find myself enjoying sword fight in shonen manga. Still frames are just rarely able to convey the thrill of sword techniques clashing. Demon Slayer tries to negate this, going past the usual blade arcs and blood splurts by adding elemental effects, but it still makes for a bland visual experience. You really need to have good art to be able to convey the speed and power behind each swing, and Demon Slayer just doesn't do enough to sell it to me. Uva Table definitely carries this series to a certain extent, but I will admit, my dislike for Demon Slayer is due to the story being a culmination of things I personally dislike in manga, so I understand that people will not see Demon Slayer the same way I do. People have preferences, a shocking revelation. The one thing I will praise is the backstories for some of these characters. You can see glimpses of this as early as the drum demon arc, and you'll definitely understand what I mean after watching Daki and Gitaro. The Hashira and a fair number of the Kizuki get explored with a flashback to their life, back before the turning point of becoming a demon or demon slayer. This is the only highlight I got out of reading this. The manga in its later parts figures out how to really make me care about cold-hearted sword wielders and man-eating demons. And it works really well with Tanjiro's need to feel bad for everyone he meets. I complained about the lack of effort in the family in the first chapter, and Demon Slayer just told me to go fuck myself and gave me bittersweet galore. I'm happy to be proven wrong, it's the only part I like about this series, but it really does carry it for me. And those are my thoughts on the current Big Free. Even with my complaints, this was pretty fun to go through. And I definitely see why these three are the most popular shonen currently airing. My final verdict, I'll continue reading uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and I might check out the anime as well. Attack on Titan, I'll leave for now unless someone can convince me otherwise. And Demon Slayer, I've already finished the manga. I have no desire to watch the anime no matter how wild Twitter gets over the action. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below because I'm very interested to see what people say. Like and subscribe for more content, I'm going to be studying soon so apologies if the uploads do slow down. That's all I want to say, I hope you all have a good rest of your day.